harpsichord was made by Giovanni Antonio Baffo in 1574. The dates are just above the keyboard. Um, Baffo was one of the leading harpsichord makers in Venice and uh, he flourished from the 1550s until the 1580s. And um, it was uh, made for a member of the Strozzi family who were a banking family in Florence and although they had branches in Venice as well. I'm Kirsten Kennedy and I'm part of the team that has put together the new medieval and renaissance galleries that are opening at the v in 2009. So that means I've helped choose the objects, I've helped select the themes and I've helped develop the uh, computer interactives and the other learning and interpretation activities that are going with the galleries. The harpsichord is in the galleries, of course we chose it because it is very beautiful, I think you can see that. But another reason is of course we're talking about what people did in their homes and of course one of the things people did to entertain themselves and their guests was to play music and by showing an object like this in the context of other things such as plates and tapestries and chairs, uh, we can convey the idea that music was also of course, a part of people's everyday life. Visitors to the gallery who see this beautiful instrument and wonder what it might have sounded like will actually be able to hear a similar instrument being played uh, on a computer interactive which is beside the harpsichord. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to have a collaboration with the Royal College of Music and they've recorded for us the type of music that would have been heard in the home or at gatherings at that time in the 16th century and so um, you will be able to go into the gallery, select your um, screen on the interactive, put your headphones on and away you go. First of all, Julia will pick which pieces she wants to do and then we'll arrange a uh, space to record. This time we've chosen to use the museum because the mu instrument over there is uh, specific to the piece um, and the time that has been specified. Um, once I've mic'd it up, Julia will come across here, she's going to listen to the sound and we can make sure between us that we're both happy uh, where the mic placement is in the room and uh, how the instrument sounds generally. Uh, once we've establish a sound and we're happy with that we'll start doing takes as we refer to them um, so we'll do a number of different recordings sometimes of different sections of the piece sometimes of the whole piece together um, and then at other points usually afterwards we'll go over bits that we've done that maybe we're not happy with or that Julia might voice an opinion on and so we have to record again once we've got a bulk of material, so here we've been recording for about three hours this morning to do two pieces, once we have enough takes uh, Julie can sit down with a score I'll create a CD for her and she can listen to all of these and uh, select edits so she'll select the highlights, all the best bits that we've got. This differs from a live performance where you only have one go at it. We can do a number of different versions of it until we're completely happy that every single amount, uh, every single bar has been covered. Um, once Julia's got suggestions for edits, she'll come in with me and then we think about how we can piece those bits together to create one solid take, which then will hopefully uh, end up being the definitive version.